Hello, everyone, and welcome to another amazing Vidor Locksmith show where we are unlocking the secrets to success here in the oil and gas industry, one interview slash presentation at a time. Just wanted to be able to show you guys, check out the hat. If you guys like it, let me know. Um, just as a quick update, since a lot of people did comment on the post from earlier this week. Um, by the way, you're not supposed to wear hats during uh, interviews and on television and stuff, uh, unless you're a baseball player, which I'm not. So, um, yeah, uh, put the post out there, but we like the hats. We are trying to set up an online store so that if you want to get some Gibson Reports, Vidor Locksmith's uh, merchandise, you can. Uh, the one thing that we did find out here recently is that if you make a shirt and then you put something on the back of it and it's just black, it costs like $28 to be able to sell through like one of these fulfillment stores. So uh, I don't know if that's like, I, I will definitely put out there what it's costing me versus like what the sale price is. So that everybody knows that I'm not jacking up the price on these. Cause we figured it out the other day. It was like, I made a dollar and seven cents for what we put the price at. So, um, but if you guys still want it, I mean, let me know. I mean, we can, we can do it. I'd much rather you guys spend money on something else other than a, a silly shirt that has my name or logo on it. So, uh, but we we'll just tell everybody, thank you guys for tuning in and watching. Uh, we've got a lot of people already joining in. So uh, my favorite, Grima, thank you so much for being here. We did a podcast with her the other day. She's been putting some stuff on social media. If you haven't seen my interview with her and you want to hear me, uh, you have her on a whole bunch more, uh, feel free to go and check it out. It's on YouTube uh go check it out john dewart as always thank you sir for for being in here so i don't know if that's a linkedin user from colorado if you're watching on both of those oh that's awesome thanks sir it's helping boost the numbers uh mr R rob rabbi i want to say that uh from algeria i swear the, the guys from from algeria and sonatrack that are watching always tune in and every week always in the top list of, of companies that watch the show so i think i need to make a trip out there sometime when i'm allowed to leave the country or leave my house uh and go visit those guys do a live show from there uh matthew hill the hardest working guy in the industry right here uh is watching the show matt thanks for for being here always helping out with oil field helping hands nice uh, i think it's night night oil tools if I'm not mistaken, I wanted to say inspection service, but I think it's Night Oil Tools. Uh, he's very, very active on LinkedIn, very active within the oil and gas community. If you guys haven't, be sure to link up uh, with Matt. He's a great guy. Uh, we've got Timothy watching from Nigeria, Gary from uh, Longview, Texas, Jenny Wilson. Jenny, thanks for being here. Uh-oh, everything just moved. Uh, Jatan, good to see you. Lovely morning from Iraq, Cyprus, Texas. Once again, an another one of the guys watching from Algeria. Is everybody in Algeria like in one room watching the show all together? That'd be awesome to see. Uh, John from India. We got somebody from South Texas. I don't know why I keep doing the LinkedIn user thing. Uh, do, 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 do. So from Tunisia. Wow. Billy Turner. Hey, guys. If you guys are looking for a, a strong MWD hand, manager, office guy, Billy knows what he's talking about when it comes to MWD stuff. Give this guy a shout if you're if that's what you're looking for. Ray Pereira, thank you, sir, for joining in. Uh, Nassar from Pakistan. He's always a consistent here on the show. Mr. Vera from Houston, Texas. Uh, Daniel Williams from – oh, wait, oops. I'm trying to click the other one. There we go. Daniel Williams out in the middle of the Delaware. Send us a picture of the rig. I don't, can you post a picture in the – comments on this thing i don't know if you can i don't know if I've, ever, I've never even tried that i don't think you can i just saw somebody said they're watching from saudi ksa in the house thank you guys mr ricardo from houston uh oops, oops, did i click the all right la ciudad del carmen in mexico with france thanks for watching guys bangladesh I think that's a new one. I, don't, I think it's the first time I've seen somebody say that they're watching from Bangladesh. So once again, thank you guys all for watching. I really do appreciate it. We've got Kurt Mir on the show today. We're going to have amazing set of information about the Haynesville Shale, uh, give you guys some really strong information for a play that's actually getting a lot of business actually growing um uh in rig count i believe it's growing in rig count it's at least staying very strong and steady i know even some businesses have cut down operations in other areas just to focus on the haynesville and what's going on out there so we'll get a lot of uh good information as far as uh what's going on so from pakistan wow this is awesome you guys are really killing it today we got a lot of people watching um i'm gonna ask one thing of you guys just one favor and it's not about sponsorship or anything like that share this with a friend 
ask a friend to come join us. Uh, oh, Nick there's in the house. One of my buddies there. Hey, Nick, thanks for watching. Um, if you guys can, tag somebody in the comments or share the video. I think it's easier just to go ahead and tag one person. You're just inviting one other person to be able to come in, watch them, just type their name into the comment section. Ask them to come over and join us. Come watch this. Um, this is what helps kind of grow the show. This is what helps you know, kind of fuel the show and keep the show going. And hopefully someday we'll get one of these people that watches the show and says, oh, that's awesome. We should sponsor that. Maybe, just maybe. All right, let's see. One more. Uh, John from Bogota, Colombia. Another one. I'll do. Oh, I already did that one. So thanks. You guys keep telling me where you guys are from. All right. Uh, so let's do this. We're going to do as per normal because I like doing this uh, little intro. Let me see if I can get it pulled up here correctly. Um, I want to say big thanks to all the people that are watching because this this does make the show. And when you guys hit the look, I just noticed this. If you guys hit like the little like button down there at the bottom right hand corner, the the LinkedIn screen, it has little hearts, and you don't have to send a heart. That sounds weird. Uh, little thinking, the little guy doing this, thumbs up, sort of clapping. When you guys do that, it feels good on this end. Makes me smile. So, all right. Uh, if you guys haven't seen it, be sure to go over to the YouTube channel and check out the How It's Done series. If you're a company that would like to be featured in the How It's Done series, get in touch with me. We are looking for companies to be able to be a part of season two right now. So if you want to be a part of season two, let me know. We'll get you on there. Here we go. And right after the commercial break, we will be back with our guest of honor. I love that intro so much. I love it. All right. Let me hit the right banner here because we're getting into the show portion. There we go. I should have had that up and ready to go. I messed up. You guys can call me out on it. Kurt, thank you so much for being on the show. Show here for that. Yeah, good morning. All right. <laughs> thank you. Oh, I didn't even mention, guys, check it out. We've got the the rig with the lights going. And if the production assistant wants to, they can even change the colors during the show. So, guys, we're trying to we're trying to add a little bit more to the show, make it even more uh, viewer easier on your eyes. Uh, make it easiest on your eyes. I'll get out of the way and let Kurt take over. Kurt, thank you for being here today, sir. What can you tell us about the Haynesville Shale? Oh, I can tell you a lot, but uh, it's good to be with you, Dave. And I get to talk to some of my drilling friends today, which I usually don't talk to them too much. So that's uh. That's nice. Uh, we're going to go over just some basic data on the Haynesville uh, shale, the play. And this is mainly public information that I've summarized and we'll show you. So I hope it's interesting. Uh, uh, my consulting company, Mirror and Associates, we do these studies sometimes as promotional issues, you know, things. Uh, sometimes we have to do them if we have a project to evaluate something. We have to kind of know what's going on in there. So, uh, uh, my like I'm Kurt Meir. I'm a PE in Texas, so uh, just wanted to lay that out there. A petroleum engineer, I registered. Okay, let me go ahead and bring it up there. Everything. Well, well okay. before we jump into it, give us a little background on on you. Uh, oh, okay, yeah. Well, tell uh, us about your company. Tell us about your website and stuff, because I won't. Yeah, uh, on this. I'm a petroleum engineer. I went to school in uh, Lafayette, U University of Louisiana at Lafayette, and I kind of started in South Louisiana in the Gulf of Mexico working. Uh, mostly in production in reservoir. And I've, I've been in some operations, but most of the time it's uh, lately, last several years, has just been reservoir evaluations mostly. Uh, I used to be in the notable analysis business early in my career. So, you know, in the heavy into the production stuff. But anyway, I started uh, my consulting company 15 years ago. And it was originally known as Mir and associates and now we're rebranding as mere petroleum consultants and uh we're a small group we basically do uh reserves and property valuations for clients uh lately it's been mostly small operators or investors but i have done a lot of work for bp i've done work for el paso uh 
Mitsui, you know, yay, some of it, you know, some of them. But anyway, we're a, we're a reservoir engineering property valuation consulting business. And uh, we've been around a long time. We've got a lot of clients. So you can uh, see my client list. It's mirrorpetroleumconsultants.com. But my new venture and my social media uh, efforts are going to be centered around Vive Lafrac. It's a new blog we're putting out. And uh, so it's vivlafrac.com, and I'll show that at the end. And it's going to be a pro oil and gas platform and educational platform. So some of the videos I've been making over the last year on engineering topics, you know, they're, they're, those are all there. And then we're going to have pro oil and gas uh, articles. Uh, we we re-released one yesterday on women in the industry, that kind of thing. But anyway, uh, if you have any questions, just reach out to me on LinkedIn or something. But today, uh, I was going to talk about the Haynesville shale. All right. The horizontal right. drilling. Are we ready to get into that? Yeah. I, and yeah. I will say this, guys. Uh, also, guys and gals, if you guys haven't, also be sure to check out Kurt's YouTube channel. Yeah. Um, I think I put out good educational material. His is way better. It is pure educational. There's uh, probably about 20, 25 uh, videos that are on there. Um, all really, really good stuff. So if you're wanting to learn more on the reservoir engineering side and uh, kind of some of the stuff that they do, be sure go over there and check it out. It is absolutely phenomenal content. So with that said, I'll go ahead and put well, your- let, me, let me say oh. something about that. Okay. Uh, we do have a lot of educational videos on how to do things, but we're trying to show like actual case studies. Like we did the reserves on a well seven years ago. This is how we did it. And then how did the well come out? You know, so kind of give you a little practical. And then also we invested in a drilling deal in Louisiana about uh, last year. And so I go through the prospect and how the drilling went and how the testing goes on. So this is like a real life prospect. And, and, and uh, you know, so you can see what goes in the, if you want to invest in a drilling deal and, and learn your lesson. But, uh, anyway. <laughs> So sometimes we have that. But anyway, okay, we wanted to talk about the Haynesville show. And, all right, yeah, all right. You so, said so, a lot of people are interested. So uh, like I said, this is mostly public information that we've compiled over the last 12 years of the horizontal play. So that's the play. So let's just go right into it. Uh, here's a map of Texas and Louisiana for the horizontal, showing the horizontal wells. Uh, and they're color-coded by cumulative production, but... Uh, anyway, so that's kind of where the activity is, where all those dots are. And uh, this is from drilling info, This all this data. So we've actually drilled over 4,700 wells in the play. So it's really important play. And it covers 16 counties. So, you know, why is this so important? Well, even the, uh, the Annie Oil and Gas Houston Chronicle has put out an article <laughs> saying how the shale, Hainesville shale is now overtaking the Eagleford. There's more rigs in the Hainesville shale than the Eagleford shale. And when I started this presentation, there were 31 rigs. And I checked yesterday, now there's 35. So it's, a, it's an important play. So we're gonna give you a, we're gonna give you a little data on, on the play and what's been going on. All right, so first of all, you gotta kinda understand where it is. The, the green outline is the Haynesville shale in Louisiana and Texas. But the Bossier shale in the dark outline to the south is also part of the play. The Bossier is a shallower shale that is being developed sometime at the same time with some of the horizontal drilling, mostly in the south. That's shown on the map right there. All right. Here, here is a reserve map from the Texas Bureau of Economic Geology, which shows you where the high reserve areas are. The red is the high reserves and the yellow and the blue are the lower reserves. So uh, up to 160 BCF per section of free gas in place. So those red areas kind of tell you where probably most of the drilling is going to go. And to the south, the, the Shelby trough to the southwest, that's kind of getting interesting. Uh, I had a client that was interested in Angelina County to the Southwest. So that kind of shows you the reserve picture. All right, let's look at the geology a little bit. 
I have a cube drawing on the on the left and a log from the uh, Angelina County showing the uh, the Bozier, which is the shallower shale play that is being developed in some areas, and the Haynesville is the deeper one in red. So what some of the people are doing, some of the operators are doing, is they're drilling two horizontal wells right from the same pad and then putting one lateral in the deeper Haynesville and one lateral in the uh, shallower Bossier. And then they frack them kind of at the same time and they call that the stack laterals. So some of the uh, operators are doing that in, in the area where the Bossier is productive. All right. There's a bunch of numbers. Uh, drilling info tries to tell you where where the target of the lateral is. So they I gave me a bunch of numbers. You know what wells were targeting by year, the Bossier or the ladder uh, Haynesville. But all you gotta get from this is that the Haynesville is 71% of the wells are targeting the Haynesville in the play. All right. Here's a blow up of some well locations in DeSoto Parish, just to give you an idea of how the pads and the wells are laid out. This is a gas field. All the wells are red, uh, color coded red for gas. So it's all gas, dry gas. You can see in section 25 here up at the top, these are all about 5,000 foot laterals, you know, equal to about one section. But over a little to the east, there's some wells that are about a one and a half section. So the lateral lengths are getting longer in some areas. They're going to longer laterals. And the spacing is about a thousand feet apart between the laterals. So that just gives you an idea of you know, how the wells look. Uh, let's look at uh, a county in Texas called Panola. Here's the horizontal uh, Haynesville wells. And the first thing you notice that the wells are oriented differently. In DeSoto, they were north-south, and in Panola, they're all uh, northwest, southeast. And that must have something to do with the geology and the stress directions. And that's why they're all drilling in the same direction, but it's to the northwest. So that's just a, gives you a picture of how the development's going. It's pretty heavy, a lot of wells being drilled everywhere. All right. Here is a production graph of the, of the horizontal development over the life of the field. And the red line is the daily rate for the total field in BCF per day. So you can see where the production got up in 2011 and 12, kind of flattened out and then it's going back up. This is a production rate versus time plot. The black line is the active well count. So we have over 4,000 active wells in the play. Currently, the play is producing nine and a half BCF per day. So that's pretty significant. And over the life of the development, the field has produced 21 TCF. So it's, it's significant. So I can give you just an idea of, of the, uh, the history and what, you know, the volumes that are coming out. All right. So where are all these wells being drilled? Here's a pie chart that shows the county or parish. Louisiana is the only state that has parishes. Every, everyone else has uh, counties, but the, the most of the wells are being drilled in DeSoto Parish in Louisiana, where that bright red reservoir reserve map showed it. And then the second uh, most active is Red River Parish in Louisiana, Caddo Parish in Louisiana, and then fourth place is Panola County in Texas. So that's where all the wells are being drilled for the last 12 years with the other counties, minor counties listed up there. All right, so here's a lot of numbers on activity by county and it's how many new wells each county is uh, experiencing per year. Uh, there's a lot of numbers on there, but the main, uh, and we estimated 2020, we had about three or four months of data from 2020. So we tried to estimate that. All this data, as I mentioned, is from drilling info. It's publicly, commercially available. It's public data. But the most of the activity is in DeSoto Parish. By far, it's the most active uh, currently 
I'm being drilled. But we noticed that even though Panola was in fourth place overall, lately it's coming up in importance. It's the second most active drilling county. One other thing I want to mention is Angelina is to the southwest. It's at the end of the Shelby trough. And I had a project. We had a project for a client at late last year, and they were real interested in Angelina County. So we did a valuation of all the BP wells over there. They're making some big wells. But it looks like the interest has really died out in Angelina, and, and there's no wells have been drilled there yet this year, and there, there's no rigs in it. So that seems to have cooled off Angelina County to the southwest. All right, so what's driving all this development? This is a production plot. Red is the average gas price versus time. And the black squares are the new wells that come on each year. So when the play kind of started in 2008, when the gas prices were really high, but it doesn't look like the well activity is tied to the gas price. You know, it's somewhat correlated maybe over here in 2015 and 16. But I think this uh, well count going up in 16, 17, 18, that might be due to that the reserves are getting better per well, not that the prices are going up. So anyway, that's, that's just kind of the history of the development and the prices. See if there's any relationship between the price of gas and the drilling. All right, so here's a graph that shows you the lateral length over time for the play. So for the last 12 years, the laterals have been averaging, starting at 4,000 average, and then all the way to this year, they're at 8,000. So the laterals are getting bigger, they're drilling them longer, and now they're about averaging 8,000 feet per lateral. So anyway, so it just continues to go up. So is it going to keep going up in the future? That's the question. All right, what about production rates, initial production rates? These are IP30s. It's like the 30-day average rate in MCF per day. So like in 2014, it was about 9 million a day or 9,000 9, MCF. And it's steadily going up each year. The rates are getting better. The laterals are getting longer and the rates are getting better. 2020, really, we don't have enough data to say that it's dropping off, but that's it there. Anyway, so the rates are getting better every year, so that's good. What about reserves? We went ahead and calculated the average reserves per year for the last 10 years. And uh, so this is in reserves in BCF or EUR per well, ultimate recovery per well. And you can see in 2014, it was about six BCF, and then it's steadily going up. It's just continually going up. And uh, reserves are now over 13 BCF per well on average. What about propent concentration? Uh, propent concentration is just how much propent per foot the operators are using. Here's a plot for the last 12 years. And the propent is uh, very high in the Haynesville higher than any of the other plays, and it seems to be going up every year. There's a little variation here, but it seems to be going up more profit, more profit, going up every year, and it's th about 3,300 pounds per foot. This is very high as compared to uh, the Delaware, which is about 2,180 pounds per foot. The Midland is about, Basin is about 1,800. That's some all plays in West Texas. The Eagle Fruit is about 2,300 pounds per foot. I didn't look at all the plays, but I did pull the Utica up in uh, Ohio. It's about 1,800 pounds per foot. So the, uh, the Haynesville really stands out. It's the most propent used in, in any of the plays. So that's important to understand. It's because propent costs a lot of money. You know, So why are they using all this propent? Per foot. So, all right. So, this is this is an analysis plot that we we use. This is called I call this the Muma analysis because James Muma, one of my associate engineers, was the first one that I think came up with this. So, what you do is you plot the normalized reserves per well, which is this reserves per uh, lateral length, and it's BCF per thousand feet. Because you have to normalize everything to lateral length because 
as you drill in longer laterals, you would expect the reserves to get better. So to be able to compare them, you have to normalize them to length. Then on the bottom, you you uh, plot the profit concentration in pounds per foot. And what we did on each one of these black dots is the average for that year. So 2004 over here on the left, all the way to 2009. So uh, what that's telling you is that even as they go to higher profit concentrations, they're getting more reserves. So that means there's maybe you can just keep increasing the profit, you know, if it's economic and you'll get more reserves. And we did an analysis of, of this, of the uh, Delaware Basin about three years ago. And we presented that at the EarthTech conference in uh, Austin. And for the Wolf Camp, we saw these black dots starting to break over. And so that would indicate that maybe you can't just keep adding more profit in the Wolf Camp. But this is telling us that in the Hainesville, you could probably add some more profit if it's you know not too expensive and you will get more reserves. So more profit yields more reserves. That's what we learned from this. And I wanted to uh, recognize James Bumar. That's him. Uh, he, he helped me and he kind of came up with this analysis. And I think now a lot of people use it. All right. So let's look at the counties. This is the performance by county for the last year and a half, 19 and 20. And I just showed the top four counties, DeSoto, where all the wells are being drilled mostly. And it shows the prop at that they're using the lateral length and the initial production rate, IP30 is initial production rate for the first 30 days. EUR per well, you know, 24 BCF here down to 11 BCF. And, but the BCF per thousand feet is the highest in the soda where the reserves are really uh, prolific. So that, that's why you're drilling all the wells in the soda because you have the more, most reserves. All right, so what I, had, I went ahead and did the MUMA analysis on the DeSoto County just to see, you know, you could do this on every county. I just did it on the most active county. You know, again, it shows that as you add more profit concentration, the reserves per foot just keep going up. So maybe there's room to add more profit. So that that's a good learning, you know. More Bang. profit yields more reserves in Cato, uh, DeSoto County. Kurt, I'm going to jump in. We've gotten a couple of questions. Okay. So, um, one of them, so, so we've started getting, like, as you're going over this, the, the MUMA analysis here, uh, we've started getting a couple of uh, specific uh, questions. So uh, Jerry Hudson was asking mostly sand propant? Yeah, well, it's just all, it's, it, whatever's reported to drill an info, and that's just sand propant, whatever, whatever they use. And I think sand is the most common thing they use now. Okay. Then we also got uh, John Dahl that said more propant, more reserve, question mark. Uh, yeah, that's that's what this analysis is telling us. Okay. If you keep going higher concentrations, you get more reserves. Now, earlier, just slightly earlier, as we were kind of getting started, Jerry Hudson had also asked the question, how about payout on these wells in total to date? Oh, I don't have that, but I am going to show the economics of a, current, a well that would be drilled today. I'm going to show you that at the end. I don't know how the whole field is done. But I will show you a typical reserve and uh, economics with today's gas prices and costs a little bit later in the presentation. All right. And then also we had here, uh, so a quick shout out to Armin Paradis. Uh, it said, Kurt Mayer, David Gibson, really appreciate you guys for the great presentation. It's very educational. I'm pointing this out because uh, Armand has got a company called uh, Inside Petroleum. He does a reservoir engineering analysis uh, and stuff. So great entrepreneur. He's doing some amazing things. If you guys haven't seen some of the stuff he's putting out on LinkedIn, be sure to check it out. Anyways, sorry. Anyway, yeah, I know I'm on. I actually have a trial version of their software, and I'm going through it trying to see, you know, but it looks really slick so far. Well, there you go. So All thanks right. for watching, Armand. Okay, so anyway, we kind of analyzed the prop, and it looks like the reserves are continually to go up because, like, in the Wolf Camp, we noticed that it wasn't going up. So it was kind of early – trend but we saw that those black dots starting to break over and and flatten out so that would mean you know you don't want to keep pumping more prop and it's not going to help you but anyway in this in the Haynesville it looks like it's still going up that's what we learned from this analysis 
All right. So what about the operators? These are the most active operators in the last year and a half. These are the top eight operators by, by the number of wells they drill. So Comstock is the most active. Uh, Geo Southern Energy is using the most propping on average, you know, really high. Chesapeake is drilling the longest laterals, 9,600 feet average in the last year or so. They have the highest initial rates. Man, that might make sense. They're getting the higher rates. But the most reserves per well are Vine, Oil, and Gas at about 18 BCF. And they're having the highest reserves per 1,000 feet of lateral. So that's your most active operators over the last year or so. So that's some good information if you're interested in what operators are doing and what. All right, I wanted to show you a couple just sample production decline curves on a few wells. I'm going to show you two wells drilled in 2017. This is a gas rate semi-log versus time and years on the box. And the red jagged line is the historical production data through the third month of, of this year. And then the smooth curve is my reserve projection on that well. So uh, this is an 8,200 foot lateral. So that's a pretty long lateral with a lot of propping. And initial production rate is a phenomenal 45 million cubic feet a day. So this is, this is a big well. And, you know, some people like to know what B factor you're using in your decline. This is hyperbolic decline. We're using a 0.65 B factor. We're not getting real aggressive on those. And we think the data, you know, the, when I looked at all the data, this is not too aggressive. And, you know, but anyway, this well is going to make about 19 BCF. So that's just an example of, of a good well in DeSoto Parish drilled by Chesapeake. So this is a typical... This is a typical decline curve analysis. We do this every day when we're doing reserve estimates. All right, I want to show you another well. This is another well drilled in DeSoto Parish, but it's by Indigo Minerals. And so here's the history with my projection, hyperbolic projection. Uh, lateral length is 8,500 feet. Propping is really high, 4,700 pounds per foot. Initial production is very good at 25 million a day. So these are big wells, guys. B factor of about 0.7. If anybody is a reservoir engineer, you'll know what that means. And the EUR is going to be 22 BCF on that well. So I just wanted to show you a little couple typical production profiles. This is a rate time production profile. Okay, so now we've seen a lot of data. All right, well, another thing we like to do is we like to plot the initial production rate versus the lateral length. Because as they're changing lateral lengths, you know, if we have to estimate reserves and rates, we like, you know, we may have to look at this trend. And we did it by operator. So in general, the longer the lateral, the higher the rate should be, right? So Chesapeake's way out on top. Atheon's kind of at the bottom. But you can see Comstock and Rockcliffe don't seem to follow the trend. They're, they're long laterals, but their rates are not that high. And I don't really know what's causing that. I know in some of the oil plays, they were using choke management, like not opening the wells wide open, you know, to help not, you know, help not damage the reservoir or the profit. I don't know if that's what's going on. But anyway, we can, you can plot all kinds of stuff to get, you know, get some feel for what's going on in the play. Sometimes we use this kind of analysis when we're trying to predict, you know, future wells, you know, what their rate's going to be. And this is for 19 and 20. This is the latest data, initial rate versus lateral length. Okay. All right, here's a drilling type curve. What I did is I took the wells that were drilled in the last year, and last year and, and the first few months of this year, and I made a normalized type curve. This is done all day long for shale evaluation. All my reservoir engineer friends will understand this. This is a, a rate profile that you think that the new wells will have if you drill them. So this is to use to, to estimate reserves and economics for new drilling. So I have this well coming on and being drilled at the end of this year, coming on at the beginning of 21. 
initial rates about 20 million a day. And this is the average of all the wells drilled into play for the last year and a half. And, you know, we had an initial decline of about 60%. Some people want to know, you know, how you did your type curve. B factor of 0.5. It's, I think that's, that's what the data is telling us. Some people want to use big, high B factors. I think you need to watch it in the Haynesville based on what I've seen. So it's, it's a production type curve, shale drilling type curve. They, these type of curves are used all the time in all the plays by reservoir engineers to help estimate reserves of future drilling. All right, so what do we have on this case? We have the average lateral for the reserves and economics that we're gonna run. We use, this is a 7,800 foot lateral. We had some drilling and completion data from Comstock and we're using 8.6 million as an average for next year's drilling. Operating expense of about 20 cents per MCF, transportation of 23 cents. This is all from Comstock and from some date the work we did earlier in last late last year for another client. And so for the economics, I used January 2020 NYMEX price strip, 80% net revenue interest. That's just an estimate. And this curve does yield 13.9 BCF and an IP that I mentioned of 20. MCF a day. So if you throw all this stuff in economics, what you get is a two year payout. You get an internal rate of return of 36%. That's pretty good. And you get a net present value PV 10 of 3.7 million. So this is kind of what we think a typical well average in the play, the economics would be. Now, if you drill in a better area or if your costs are a little higher, you know, this changes. I just wanted to throw that out there. It looks like the average well, even at current gas prices, makes money. That's why they're drilling them, huh? All right, so where are the rigs right now? You guys are drillers, right? So where are the rigs? So I pulled this yesterday. There's 35 active rigs in the play. Here they are. Uh, so the... DeSoto is number one. Harris County, Harrison County has moved up to second place with the rig count. So DeSoto is number one. Harrison, which is kind of new to the scene, has got five rigs. And Red River, you know, in Louisiana, where that thick gas reserves are, is third. And Panola now is picking up steam with four rigs. So that's where the rigs are being drilled. And that's where the wells are being drilled right now. 35 active rigs. So this is more than the Eagle for Shale. All right, so who's drilling the wells? So we'll go ahead and put up the top operators by the number of rigs. So Atheon Energy has got eight rigs. They're number one, followed by Comstock, Indigo, and Rock, Rock Cliff. So here's all the well, uh, operators that have a rig running right now in the play. So I hope that's interesting. If you follow in any of these companies, you you know you can see which ones are the most active. All right, here's a rig count trend over the last five years for Arklatex. Haynesville is part of the Arklatex region, and the blue line is the horizontal well count, the rig count, and you could see that the uh, in the last year it's dropped off pretty bad to about 31 rigs. But like I said, this week there's 35, so that might be trending upward. And the big thing is that in the whole United States, it's now 12 and a half percent of all the rigs are running in the Haynesville, so it's it's gaining in importance. Okay, I also have the permitting activity for the Arklatex region just to kind of show you that this is over the last year. So the per, you know th that gives you a little future idea of what's going to happen with the drilling based on the permitting. This was seven dated seven twenty, and uh, you know July is not over yet. So anyway, that that's just the permitting activity for the horizontal wells are in and blue, and all the wells in the Hangsville are horizontal. These other ones may be uh, vertical wells, may be uh, Cotton Valley or other plays in the Arklatex area. All right. This is a mark. This is some market analysis data from this month. And there's a lot of numbers on here. 
a lot of times when we're doing consulting projects, the client wants us to figure out, you know, how much is his field worth based on, you know, the market. So we, you can go to BMO, Bank of Montreal. They publish this every week and it shows like these deals, like what, who bought what from who, how many acres was it? You know, what did they pay? You know, what did they pay for the reserves per MCF or what did they pay for each flowing MCF? So you got that. And then you can say, well, how much did they pay per acre? So it's just giving you like metrics. So you can do reserves and economics, but you can always check your answer against these values because this is kind of what the market is telling you that your fuel might be worth. So anyway, I just threw that up there. Sometime we use it and we can get um, – like for the production multiples, so you, they're paying about $3,900 for each MCF per day that you're producing. And you and they're paying about $3,180 per acre. So that's kind of what the market is saying, the architects and mainly the Hanesville is worth. And that compares to some of the all plays. So like uh, that's the uh, architect's value, but what about the Eagleford? Eagleford's oily and it's much higher. Eight thousand dollars per acre is the average, and the Permian is even just phenomenal. Twenty-four thousand dollars per acre. That's what the sales are running. So anyway, sometimes we look at this. This is not real technical. It's just kind of using analogy and what's going on in the market. I hope that's interesting to you. So I just threw that in there. But if you're going to buy some Hainesville acres, maybe thirty-one hundred dollars an acre is the bid, huh? All right. Here's some operating expense data for the last two years or so. Uh, this is from Comstock Resources public uh, filing. And the black bars are the OPEX, our lifting costs of 23 cents per MCF. And the transportation and gathering is pretty high. Seems like there's some cost to get the gas out of that basin. It's 23 cents. So the the gathering and operate the gathering is as expensive as the operating of the wells. So we kind of use this in our economics that I showed you earlier, plus some experience we had on another project. So it looks like the expenses, uh, the lifting costs may be trending downward, but the that transportation costs that must be based on contracts and the mark and the pipeline companies. It's not going down, so it is significant when your gas is selling for less than $2 an MCF and you're giving 10% of it to the pipelines or the truck, the gatherers. All right. What about drilling costs? This is drilling costs from Comstock over the last three years or so. For, and, and it's, it's in cost per foot. You know, it looks like about $1,300 a foot. Now it's dropping about $1,100 a foot. So they seem to be thinking that their costs are going down. So we kind of use this in our economics to come up with the well cost for a typical well. All right, here's, here's the cash flow report for the drilling of a new well. This is what I do in my company. This is what we do all the time. We generate these cash flow reports. I know it's a lot of numbers. I just wanted to show you a sample. So you have the years. This is a typical uh, annual cash flow report. You have the years right here. And then you have the projected reserve, projected reserves in gas that you're going to produce each year. And you have the drilling costs as an investment. This one is $8.6 million and uh, net present value of about $3.7 million. Reserves are down at the bottom of about 13, 14 BCF. And then you have all your economic indicators. So we do that. This is kind of something we do a lot of the times. If you're not a reservoir engineer, you may not be familiar with it. That's why I just wanted to show you. This is this is called a discounted cash flow analysis, and we use this to project the reserves and value of wells or fields. All right, so what's the outlook? We, we kind of went on showed a lot of data. What's the outlook over here? I got the NYMEX gas strip market strip right here, and this is what the market says that. Uh, gas is going to be worth in the future. So right now we're pretty low under $2, $1.70, for the near months. But out into the future, it looks like gas prices are expected to be a little better, you know, in the mid $2 per MCF. 
So it looks like gas prices are going to get better for next year. I think that's due to the demand. Um, but, you know, the rig count appears to have stabilized and may be increasing recently. And the drilling costs appear to be going down a little bit. And we would expect that, you know, with the market the way it is. And the reserves per well continue to increase. So wouldn't you want to drill in an area where the reserves keep going up? And we had uh, some information from one of the think tanks. They said they think after this pandemic is over that there's going to be strong electrical demand growth and that natural gas will be filling most of that. So maybe the outlook for the Hayesville is good. Uh, so even the, uh, this article came out in the Houston Chronicle a few days ago and they're seeing, you know, they're, they're writing about the drillers are picking up activity. So maybe the outlook is good for the Haynesville. And so we need to understand it a little better and know who's drilling and what the values and reserves are. So that's what was the purpose of all this information. Hope it was interesting. Uh, I do want to mention Again, you know, my company, Mirror Petroleum Consultants, but our new blog, Vive La Frac, and I appreciate if y'all could go check that out and maybe subscribe to that. And we have uh, YouTube videos, and we have the petroleum engineering videos on Mirror Petroleum Consultants' YouTube channel. So anyway, that's it. Uh, that's all I got today, Dave, David. And uh, well, I questions, I'll try to answer them, but. I, I'll tell you what, I was absolutely glued to the screen while you were doing this. I mean, there's so much to be to learn from this. And a lot of this just goes to show why so much uh, activity is going that direction. Um, more reserves, better production and uh, positive outlook on prices. So uh, it definitely looks uh, like that will be uh, here in the near future, an area to be focused in on. So any of the service companies that are doing work out there, especially if you saw one of your clients names on there, uh, maybe share this with them, let the, you know, get their feedback. Um, so uh, we've definitely had some, some, some activity here in the comment section. Let me go ahead and pull this back up there so, for us, but I should do this again, guys. Be sure to go to the website after this. Once the show's done, then go. Not yet, but after <laughs> the show's done, go check it out. All right, so let me make sure I do this right. So now we're on to the Q&A section. If you guys have any questions for Kurt, please be sure to fire them off. Let's get this going. Uh, we do have a question here that came in. Um, uh, has there been any excess success with refrac on earlier drilled wells in the area? I do not know. That's a good question. I, I in the general, uh, from my experience in other plays, it it's they've had mixed results. But that's the, from limited information I have in other plays. You know, you you kind of really got to know what you're doing to to figure out what wells to refract. But I don't have any personal knowledge in the Hainesville. Okay. But I'm hoping right. that would be a that would be a good reserve adding. We could book some more reserves and do some more reserve reports. <laughs> Jerry says uh, the decline looks much more favorable in the Haynesville than in the Permian wells. Just a, a comment there. It's kind of a, well, a question. I have a client that has about 15 wells in Midland County. And they were doing really good until the all crash. He, he was uh, counting his, his uh, money. But now he's kind of a little more uh, cautious. So I did some work for him, and I have a video on that on my YouTube channel. It's called the uh, uh, Delaware Midland Basin 12 Well Review. But, you know, it's kind of out of date because I did it about a year ago. But it does show the reserves and the economics at that time. But anyway, but they're good wells, and they keep getting better. They're, they're, they're getting better, too. So. I just want to throw this one out there. Patty Murphy says, this is a very well-organized presentation with answers to questions I didn't know to ask. <laughs> well done. Thank you. Thank you, Patty. I appreciate that. Uh, Casey says, this is a nice informative presentation, giving us a better overview of what's going on in the play and why, and then anything I've found uh, on in play and then 
I was just saying everything's better. Thanks, Casey. I can't read today. Screw it. Sorry, guys. Uh, Casey did ask a question. Of where did it go? Oh, crap. I'm moving around too quick. Sorry. Um, Casey says, how does the B factor and the EUR lateral footage compare to uh, core Marcellus Utica acreage? I've heard something county, Pennsylvania, primarily yeah. Cabot Oil and Gas has best economics in that county. But that, of course, may be impacted by local pricing, excess Appalachian gas. Yeah, uh, I have not done much in the Marcellus. I have been working uh, the Utica for one of my clients. The B factors are much higher. Uh, the reserves are looking OK, uh, you know, at current gas prices. But they were bet, uh But they all, you know, because they make all in gas. So the, uh, anyway, I, I haven't looked at them lately. Uh, but I have done some Utica work, and they do have higher B factors than the, than the, uh, what I'm seeing in the handle. All right, so we got another one here. Matt says, "Viva la frac!" I was glued hey, to the. That's, that's a good name, huh? That's yeah. Name. We want pro oil and gas. We want we want to we want to support the oil industry. He says, I was glued to the screen too. Thank you. Hey, if you guys got something out of this and you were really glued to the screen, like, like I was, please be sure to share this, like get this information out there, get uh, everybody else in our industry educated up. Um, you know, a rising tide lifts all ships. So I don't think anybody would be upset with you if you were to, to, you know, tag their name in the comments, which I saw a couple of people do, or there, even though we've got almost a hundred people watching and only two or three people did it. So guys, come on. Uh, good presentation, Kurt. Thanks to David. Uh, will the presentation be made available online uh, for download? Yes, I will. We will. Uh, there will be probably some, some small little edits to it, but we will get, uh, uh, get it going that way. Uh, so Matt asks, are there workovers going up in this play too? I have no information on that. All right. Well, there we go. Uh, Philip says, uh, great, uh, great information and presentation. Thanks, you guys. Uh, let's see. Do, do, do. Uh, what does Kurt foresee as the next breakthrough in shale drilling and completion and can extend economic life for gas sales? I, I don't have a crystal ball on that, but I think we could see that more propping and longer laterals are going to make more money. So maybe it'll be an incremental change. We'll just uh, keep increasing the profit. All right. And Philip says, so what would you say is the biggest challenge looking forward for the Haynesville focused operators? Well, I think you got to get an acreage position and then you got to have a lot of money to drill because the wells are about $9 million each. Uh, so if you don't have an acreage position, I don't know how you would get in. I guess you could buy your way in. Uh, but if they're already in, if that challenges for the ones already in, uh, I think it'd be operational and keeping the, you know, getting those long laterals drilled efficiently and, and frack cheaply. That would be the challenge because if you run the price up too much higher, the economics start going down at the current gas prices. So you got to keep you. Op, you got to be operationally good and you got to drill. You got to target your lateral length to where you are, because in the DeSoto, that's where all the reserves are. You might want to go a little longer on your laterals there. So the geology does matter and it depends on where your leases are. All right. Uh, Lee says, I know, right, David, you're going to put me in timeout. Yes, you are in timeout, Lee, for getting to the show late. Shame on you, sir. All right, guys, if you guys got any more questions, be sure to, to throw them out there. We're getting these, uh, going through these pretty quick. Uh, how are the wells abandoned? Is there anything special compared to other plays? I, I don't know much about that. I don't think they've been abandoned too many of them, huh? But most, a lot of them seem like out of 4,700 wells that were drilled, over 4,000 are still producing. So maybe some of those have been abandoned, but I, I don't really get involved with that. But that's a good question, you guys in the service business. You know, what's going on on abandonment? So what are your thoughts as far as like how they, uh, how much is the drilling affecting the overall, like either production um, or, um, or, or cost of the well? Because I know a lot of the people that are at least watching the show here are, are on either directional drilling bits, things of that nature. What would you say as far as um, with the information that you've given out that could be helpful towards them? 
Yeah, I don't really have a lot of details on the split between drilling and completion mm -hmm. uh, in this play. I know in uh, some of the other plays, it was about half the cost was the frac. But yeah, I don't know. I don't really know the breakdown between the completion and the drilling. Uh, sorry. All right. Well, what other things? I mean, because as we uh, were waiting for and see if any more questions come in, guys, I know there's about a 30 second delay between like what you probably see on the screen and what's actually happening live between us. Um, so if you guys have any questions, be sure to, to, to throw yeah. them out there. Uh, I mean, we could, if we could go over some of the slides, I kind of went through them fast. If anybody wants to see one, we could. Look oh, at here it. we go. Rob Iger says, do you see any operators extending the play to the south of Red River Parish? Well, in let's look at the map. All right. Let's see what the map says. Bring that back up. I want to go back. Okay. Okay. So you see there are about uh, five rigs south of Red River. Or at least three, if you know. So there seems to be they're drilling. Uh, there is some activity in south of Red River. And let's look at uh, let's look at the geology south of Red River. Let's see if we can see that. Do, do, do. Now's a great time, guys. If you can, tag somebody else in the comments. Let them know that this is happening. They can always at least just see that they were tagged in it, and then once we're done, be able to go back and watch uh, the whole thing, either here on LinkedIn or on YouTube. So, yeah, sorry. No worries. Take your time, sir. I, I can always just keep blabbering on. Okay, so, so you see that red, that bright red below the words Red uh, red River? So there's some thick reserves right there. So that, that might be why those rigs there. Mm. Well, there is your answer to your I question. Answer, but... So John DeWar says, do you expect major moves uh, to move in with vertical integration processing plants or will the re re region remain with a domain of independence? Well, I really don't know much about that. I just know BP has a bunch of stuff on the Southwest end of the field and they were actively drilling, but Seems like lately they they shut it down. There's no rigs running to the southwest. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. I don't know what the strategy of the majors are uh, if they're going to come in. I know, like I said, BP is in there. I think that was the only major that I had on my operator list. If anybody remembers. So a a similar question here: uh, How will adding more pipelines change the economics? Will it increase the payouts? Uh, what about more LNG plants are added to the Gulf? Well, we always would like to have a market for the gas, right? And if we have more pipelines, if we could get that transportation charge down from 23 cents in MCF, I mean, that would make a nice, that make a huge difference on the payout. You know, that, that transportation charge is pretty stout, in my opinion. Here's a great question from uh, Joey Hopper. Do you think operators will push lateral lengths upwards to three miles in the Haynesville as the as is the practice uh, is already being done in the Marcellus? Marcellus. You know, that's a good question. Uh, like I said, I did some work in the Utica and they were like 13,000 feet laterals I was working on. Uh, well, I don't know what they're planning to do, but you can see the historical says it's going to go up. Can they see this? Yes, sir. I yeah, so they are going longer. So, I mean, uh, are they going to stop at 8,000 feet? I, I don't know. It, it, you know, sometimes the unitization and the state, the different states, the way they set the units, you got to go get permission to make bigger units. So, that, you know, uh, that may take a little regulatory change, you know, to be able to go across three sections. I know in Louisiana, you know, that I don't know if they can do that in Louisiana. All right. Well, the uh, questions are kind of starting to slow up a little okay. bit. So, uh, Kurt, any last words that you would like to be able to share with anybody out there if they're looking to be able to learn more about reservoir engineering or uh, being able to get in touch with you? Okay. Yeah. Now, look, on uh, I, on my Mirror and Associates website, I have some studies that we did in the Bakken. And um, and we did one on the um, the T Tuscaloosa Marine Shale, and we did one on the Midland. So you can look at that. And then the videos 
if you want to learn, a lot of my videos are on PhD win economics. So if people are, have some downtime and they think they might want to get into the reserves and do an economics, you can get a trial version of PhD win. And then I have videos on how to do everything, you know, and you could try practicing. They call me, I'll give them a, I'll give them a, a sample database to work. So some people have reached out to me to, they said they're going to try to learn PhD win. So the, the two big economic programs right now are Aries and PhD win. So for doing reserves and economics out. So anyway. And then the new one inside petroleum, right? Yeah. Inside petroleum is a new kid on the block. They seem to be getting some attention. Yeah. I've heard those guys doing well, so be sure yeah. to give them. I, I'm always for the new entrepreneurs, so give those guys. A well, they they worked on that for a long time because they reached out to me about a year and a half ago to kind of advise them on some stuff, and I was like, "How long is this going to take, man?" But they, <laughs> but I'm glad they got it out. The software business is a tough business. Man. Tell me about it. Tell me all about it. I've that that's pretty much kind of where my domain's at. We're doing a little bit of both here at Gibson Reports. By the way, this show is brought to you by Gibson Reports, gibsonreports.com. So go and check it out if you guys want to know anything about the direction drilling and MWD business as we are growing our software and data set nationwide now, not just Texas, nationwide. So Do you use drilling info? No, they some point in time drilling info is going to wisen up and they're just going to buy us out. Oh, cuz they're not going to have the data that we have. Shots fired. Anybody from Drilling Info or Intervus or whatever their name is that's watching, telling you, you're just going to end up buying us out. Oh, that or IHS is going to buy us before then, and then they're going to have all the cool stuff that we have. So wow. just say uh, patent pending now. Um, <laughs> so, guys, thank you all so much for watching the show. Be sure, Viva La Frac, uh, go check out the website, Kurt and Myers Associates. Uh, check out Kurt's uh, YouTube channel. Uh, if you haven't already, I also highly recommend uh, send a connection request over to uh, Kurt on LinkedIn. Get connected with him. See some of the stuff that he's putting out there on LinkedIn. It's absolutely amazing stuff. This is how I found out about him. I saw some of the stuff that he was putting out. It was educational. It wasn't salesy. It wasn't pitches or anything like that. It was educational-based uh, content trying to help the industry um, uh, be, be more informed. So I reached out to him. That's why I wanted to be able to have him come on the show uh, and, and be here. Um, obviously, we could probably do this again for multiple different basins. If you guys like what you guys are seeing, you like what's going on, be sure to uh, let us know. Give us some feedback. Um, if you like Kurt and you want to see him do this again, uh, you know, send him some information. We'll, we'll, we can always uh, run this one back and, and do it for whatever area you guys have interest, or we can talk about, you know, other reservoir engineering stuff. So really do appreciate it guys. If you can uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel, follow me on LinkedIn, all the other nonsense stuff that I usually say on here. So guys, once again, thank y'all so much. We've got a couple of these. Uh, we should put it here. Uh, uh, Antonio says, Kurt, congrats. Today's talk is getting better and better. Uh, Jerry says very practical presentation. Kurt and David, thanks again. Great presentation. Other LinkedIn users said great presentation. And Matt Hill plugs his company there at the end. So you guys, you guys can plug your company all you want in the in the comment section. If you don't have a job, say, hey, I don't have a job. Connect with the other people that are in the comment section as well. This is meant to be interactive, not just interactive with myself and Kurt or whoever the guest may be, but also interactive in the comment section for you guys. I appreciate all of y'all very, very, very much. There we go. Matt does it now. He plugs my company, Gibson Reports. Thanks. I appreciate that. All right, you guys, uh, follow the hashtag Vidor Locksmith. Uh, I hope everybody has an absolute amazing weekend. And like I said, now that the show is ending, now go over to Kurt's YouTube channel, go over to his website, Viva La Frac, and connect with him here on LinkedIn. So, guys, thank you all so much for being here. I really do appreciate it. Have a great weekend. And as always, know your industry. And I didn't have the button pulled up. I had to screw up at least one more time. There we go.